Hey guys, welcome to section 1.2 on formulas. Let's get started. So the very first thing that we need to talk about is inverse operations. So inverse operations are operations that undo the action of another operation. And these are things that you've uh, played with since elementary school, really. Uh, addition is the opposite or the inverse operation of subtraction and vice versa. Subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. Multiplication can be undone by a dividing stuff, and division of uh, two terms can be undone by simply multiplying those terms together. So here's a couple of questions. If we were to add 3 to 5 to get 8, what do we need to do to get 5 back from the 8 that we got as an answer? Hopefully you're thinking, well, we need to subtract the 3 from 8, and you'd be right. So if you have 5 plus 3 equals 8, and we need to go back from 8 to 5, well, we need to subtract 3 from 8. Similarly, if we have 5 minus 3 equaling 2, same question. How do we get the 5 back from the 2? Well, if you're starting with the 2, then if you add 3 to it, you go back to 5. And the same questions apply for division and multiplication as well. So if we divide 10 by 2 and we get 5 as the answer, what do we need to do in order to go back from 5 to 10? Well, we need to multiply 5 by 2. So undoing the action of division by 2 with a 10. And lastly, if we have 10 multiplied by 2 instead and we get 20 as our answer, then how do we go back from 20 to 10. Hopefully you're thinking, well, you just divide 20 by 2. And you'd be right. You, you just undo the action of the multiplication. A couple other things to keep in mind, new terminology-wise. You should understand the difference between an expression and an equation. These are This is a very, very fundamental difference between two ideas that are central to the course. So an expression is simply a sum or difference or product or a quotient of some numbers and variables. And the thing that you have to keep in mind is that it does not have an equal sign within the expression. So if you just have 3x squared, well, 3x squared is a product of numbers, well, a number, 3 in particular, and a variable, x squared. And then you have a sum between this term and 4 times x, which is, again, a product of a number and a variable. And then you have subtraction, or a difference, of 5. Similarly, you have 4x, which is a product of 4, a number, and a variable, the x. And then you're adding to that the quotient, or division, of 2 and 3. So both of these are examples of expressions. Hopefully you notice that there are no equal signs here, and there's no equal signs here within the expression. So what that means is, can you simplify this? And later on in the course, we will do that. Later on in the course, we will simplify something that looks like this into something else. But that does not mean that within this expression, there's an equal sign. Now, this expression could be set equal to something else. And we'll see what happens when we do that. So that's what an expression is. An equation, by contrast, is two expressions with an equal symbol between them, or two expressions that are set equal to each other. Meaning, if you take the 3x squared plus 4x minus 5, this expression, if you were to set it equal to 10, which is another expression, it's just a number. Now, if you set these two terms equal to each other, or these two expressions equal to each other, this now becomes an equation. And similarly, if we take the, the second expression from the left-hand side, the 4x plus 2 over 3, and we set it equal to 7, well, now that expression turns into an equation. The one thing that I need you guys to remember from day one until the end of the course is that if you start the problem with an expression, you have to end it with an expression as well. If you start the problem with an equation, it has to end with an equation as well. Expressions cannot be turned into equations. Equations cannot magically be turned into expressions. So please, please, please keep that in the back of your mind as we solve these problems throughout the semester. 
couple other things to keep in mind before we get started. Uh, the topic of this particular section is formulas. So a formula is an equation, again, keep in mind that it's an equation, with multiple variables in it. So y equals 3x plus 4, it, this is an equation because it has an equal sign with two expressions on either side. And there's multiple variables, so this is a formula. A formula is just a special type of equation. So 2x plus 3yz equals 4, this is an equation, but in particular this is also a formula because it's got multiple variables in it. f equals 9 over 5c plus 32. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar, but this is actually the formula to change a Celsius temperature to Fahrenheit temperature, or vice versa. If you're given a Fahrenheit temperature, you can figure out what the Celsius equivalent would be as well. And these two formulas down here are very, very famous formulas in physics. F equals MA is Newton's second law of motion, for those of you who are either interested in physics or have taken it in the past. And S equals UT plus one half AT squared is a formula that relates the position of a moving object with the initial velocity, the speed at which it starts moving, times the time that it's moving for. Uh, A is the acceleration of the object if it's accelerating, and then T is the time again. So this is also a very, very famous, very useful formula for physicists. And lastly, uh, PV equals NRT. This is the ideal gas law, and this is used in physics, chemistry, biology, and the sciences. It's a formula that relates the pressure of a gas, the volume of a gas, uh, some sort of gas constant, I forget what N stands for, uh, the temperature, and R is some constant as well, I believe. So these are all formulas, and the formulas, what they allow us to do is, given one quantity, we can solve for the other quantities. So if, for instance, we're given the force that's applied on an object, and we're given the mass of the object, then we can figure out how fast is it going to accelerate, or what is the acceleration going to be. If we're given the initial velocity, the time, and the acceleration, we can figure out where the particular object is going to be in space. How far has it moved from where it started? So being able to Play with formulas is not just something quite important in mathematics, but in pretty much any field that uses mathematics as its backbone. So the sciences, computer science, engineering, physics, chemistry, biology, all these disciplines need a very strong ability to manipulate formulas. So that's what we start the course with. So here are a couple of guiding principles in order to isolate variables you should keep in mind that when you're moving terms from one side of the equation to the other side, so this does not mean just from the left to the right. This just says from one side of the equation to the other. That means you can move terms from the right side to the left side or the left side to the right side. It, it has no bearing on anything. What you have to remember is you have to perform the opposite operation. So addition on one side yields subtraction on the other because we have to do the opposite operation or the inverse operation. Multiplication on one side yields division on the other side. So hopefully you remember that from these questions that we started at the beginning with. If I have a 5 plus a 3 and I get 8, how do I get from the 8 back to the 5? Well, we need to take this 3 that's a positive three, or the three is being added to the left-hand side. If I were to physically pick this up and move it over to the right-hand side, I would need to subtract the three instead of adding it. So that's essentially what we have here. And lastly, fractions seem to be this, this unknown devil that students are irrationally afraid of. All you have to do is just multiply all terms, and this is the part that students tend to mess up on. They don't treat the entire problem the same. So what you have to do is multiply all terms by the offending denominator. Now, I added the word offending because that's what students feel that the denominator is doing to them, that in some way it's, it's an offensive thing and they don't want to see it. So this is not a mathematical term. Offending is just a half joke here. So let's go through a couple of examples, see how we actually solve these problems. So if the question says, solve this formula, f equals ma, for a, 
What that means is we're given a formula, which is really just an equation, some expressions with an equal sign in the middle, and we need to isolate this variable a. So in order to do that, the first thing I always do is I, I just copy down the question. I don't like making any changes to uh, the statement that I'm given. So I copy down the question, and then I recognize that the operation between m and a is multiplication. So between m and a, I have an invisible product here. So if I wanted to get rid of this m, because I want to solve this equation for a, that means I need to isolate a on one side of the equation, I need to get rid of this m. So if the operation between m and a is multiplication, the opposite of multiplication is division. So if I have to physically pick this m up and move it over to the other side, the opposite of multiplication being division, I have to place it on the denominator. So I have to divide f by m, yielding just a on one side. Again, we are doing an inverse operation. The opposite of multiplication is division. So this simply just goes to the other side and becomes a division. And that's it. We've solved for a. We have isolated a. And what that means to us is that a is on one side by itself with nothing else on the other side that contains an a. So when we isolate or solve formulas for a particular variable, that means that variable must exist by itself on one side. So you can't have an a here and an a here. Well, if you do, you haven't solved the equation for a yet. So what students incorrectly commonly believe is that, well, if I get one a by itself, then I'm done. And that's incorrect and untrue. You can only have one a on one side of the equation and no other a's on the other side of the equation. And it cannot be 2a or negative a or 3a or 5a. It has to just be a and nothing else. Next, we have uh, an equation that I wrote earlier or a formula that I wrote earlier, 2x plus 3yz equals 4. And the question is asking us to solve this equation for y. And again, that means we need to get y by itself on one side and get everything else over to the other side. So the way we accomplish this, I first see that 2x is being added to the 3yz. And I don't have to micromanage and deal with these terms individually because there is no y in these two terms. So if I wanted to take this 2x and move it over to the other side, I would need to do the opposite operation or the inverse operation of what's happening to it currently. Right now it's being added. So if I move it over to the other side, I need to subtract it. So I'm physically picking up this 2x. I'm moving it over to the other side. And when I do, I perform the opposite operation on this side. And then I notice that the 3 and z are actually being multiplied by the y in the middle. So if the 3 and the z are being multiplied by the y, if I were to pick up this 3 and this z and move them over to the other side, I would simply need to do the opposite operation. Opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm, when I move the 3 and the z over to the other side, I just simply place them underneath. And that's it. The y is by itself, which is what we wanted. We have PV equals NRT for T. So we want to solve the ideal gas law for temperature. And here we notice that this side doesn't have any t's in it, so we don't have to touch it. This side just has one term. It's the product of n, r, and t. n times r is a product, and n and r is being multiplied by t. So again, if I wanted to get rid of this n and r, I would need to do the opposite operation, which is division, over to the other side. So if I divide PV by NR, I get T by itself, which is what I'm trying to accomplish. And that's it. T turns out to be PV equals NR. Lastly, I believe this is the last one. Uh, we have this long equation, S equals UT plus 1 half AT squared, and we're trying to isolate A. So again, this is really quite short if you just take care of the inverse operations. If you start getting into fractions and you start doing some crazy stuff, the problem is going to get out of hand. So let's keep it simple. We notice that this term does not have an A in it. So anything that does not have an A in it, I need to move to the other side. I need to get rid of it because that's what we're trying to isolate, A. 
So if I move the UT over to the other side, I need to do the opposite operation. Right now, it's being added to the right-hand side. So if I were to physically pick up this UT and move it to the left-hand side of the equation, I would need to subtract it. So I get S minus UT equals, well, I didn't touch this, so this just comes along for the ride. And now we notice that in order to get A by itself, I have a 2 on the bottom. So that means the 2 is being divided. And the T squared on top is multiplying the A. So if I wanted to get rid of the T squared, what would be the opposite operation of multiplication? Hopefully you're thinking division. So what I would need to do is take S minus UT and divide the T squared over to the other side. Similarly, if I take this 2 that's in the denominator, currently I'm dividing A by 2. If I wanted to get rid of this 2, I would need to multiply it over to the other side. And here's where most students make mistakes. If I were to multiply the other side by 2, notice the emphasis on my words. I said I want to multiply the other side by 2. That requires us to multiply the entirety of the other side by 2. Not just S, not just U, not just T. I need to multiply S minus UT by 2. And if we do that, on the right-hand side, you'll notice that I'm left with 1 times A, which is simply A. And that's what the question asked us to do. It asked us to isolate A or solve this equation for A, and we're done. So that's it for formulas. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Other than that, have a nice day.